Good evening, folks. Today we're going to talk about one person in particular, Joan of Arc. What does Joan of Arc have in common with Benedict Arnold? Really not, really not a lot, but there's just a few things. Well, obviously, one, she's a girl, and Benedict Arnold was a full-grown adult at the time. Second of all, Benedict Arnold was never captured after he defected, but she was captured, but she never did defect. And the other thing about these two is that he was a little older, but she was really young. And he changed the war for the, around for the United States in one battle. She just changed the war around with just one person. As just a person. Now, you begin to ask yourself this one question about Joan of Arc. It's just a lot of conspiracy theories at this point. God told her she'd get captured. Somehow, some way, that theory turned out to be true. Now, nobody knows to this day how that truth came out, but who knows? Nobody really does know. But Joan of Arc was very smart. She was a smart girl. She was a true believer in God. However, the only thing about her, what stood between her and God, was herself. She was self-reluctant. She always wanted to stop the English. She wanted to reclaim France. The northern part of France was in control by the English. So they wanted just to do that. Hundred Years War was pretty much what changed the entire outcome of the entire war. Now Joan of Arc when Joan of Arc was only three years old in 1415, Anacourt, English pretty much will demolish the French. Only 8,100 English troops led by King Henry V, Duke of York, Sir Thomas Camoys, and Sir Thomas Eppin Eppingham charged and killed, and with 25,000 French troops, Charles de Albert, Jean Le Merogral, Duke of Orleans, Orleans, Duke of Alencon, and Duke of Bourbon. All were Duke of Bourbon, Duke of Orleans, and Jean de la Mole were all captured, while Charles de Albert and Duke of Alencon were killed. Total casualties 6,000 killed, 2,200 captured. French. Now, 600 English were killed, only, only 112 were identified out of the 600. That's pretty bad. But, but what, let's, let's go through the campaigns that she participated in. The Loring Campaign. October 12th through June 8, 1428 through June 18th, 1429. Very interesting battle. And this, the Loring Campaign was through the Loring River. The March to Rims, pretty much 19,900 French troops led by Joan of Arc, John, Duke of Alencon, La Hare, Jean de Zententeras, Jean de Doins, Giles de Reins, Jean de Bros. Wow, the English have 11,200 troops. John Talbot, Thomas de Scales, John Fastoff, William de la Pole, 
and Thomas Montacute. Thomas Montacute was killed. Graham D. LePole captured, so was Tom Descals and John Tolbolt, all captured. 9,000 casualties reported for the, Fr for the English, not the French. But 2,500 casualties were reported for the French during that whole campaign. Now, during the battle, the Siege of Orleans, there were 6,400 French troops, 3,000 armed citizens, a total of 9,400 troops altogether. Jean de Doins, de Doins, Joan of Arc, Gauss de Reigns, Jean de Brois, and the Herr were in charge of the, of the French. About 3,800 English troops, 1,500 Burgundian troops, with three, with five thousand three hundred troops altogether, Earl of Salisbury and Earl of Suffolk, Earl of Suffolk and John Talbot were there. Literally, a battle. Four thousand casualties reported. More than four thousand, technically. And that was a decisive victory for the French. Two French victories. A French victory there. Then we go over to the Battle of Jugardo, June 11th through June 12th, 1429. 3,000 French troops to 700 English troops. Joan of Arc and Duke of Alencon. John, Duke of Alencon. William de la Pole. Light casualties for the French. Heavy casualties for the for the English. Then you got Battle of Mangu Lu Lu Sir Lu on June fifteenth, fourteen twenty nine. It was another French victory. Six thousand seven hundred six thousand to seven thousand French troops versus five thousand English troops. Joan of Arc and John Duke of Alencon versus five thousand English troops under John Lord Tabled and Thomas Lord Scales. Light casualties for the French, heavy casualties for the English. Then we got the Battle of... Then we got the Battle of... Beyoncé. John Tabled was in charge. Joan of Arc, John Duke of Alencon. It was a war. Though it was a French victory... Nobody really knows how many were wounded or killed. Then you got Siege of Paris, September 3rd through 8th, 1429. First loss for the sea after the Battle of Yonkzi. The Lorraine campaign was over. Then we got other little sieges. Siege of... Joan of Arc was wounded in this battle. Just like how she was wounded... In the first battle of Orleans, she was wounded in this battle too. Shot in the thigh. But 3,000 English citizens under Jean de Vela Simon Mio, unknown how many would be captured. 10,000 French troops under King James VII, Joan of Arc. Was wounded. Jean de Alavacon, Giles de Reigns, Jean de Bros, 500 killed, 1,000 wounded. Joan of Arc being one of them. Then November 4th, 1429, Joan of Arc and Charles de Albert attacked Pierna Grestard. Big time victory for the French. And then, Siege of Le Chiao, November 24th through December 25th, due to 1429, due to harsh weather conditions, the attack was pulled off. Then the Siege of Camchion, 
early from May to early November 1430, it was a French victory. But under Joan of under Gumblea de Flauve and Joan of Arc, who was captured during that war, and Count of Langley, Earl of Huntington, Earl of Ardendale, none were captured except for Joan of Arc. Tremendous amount of casualties in both Siege of Le Chiel and Siege of Compagnon. Heavy amount of casualties on both battles. I gotta say, Joan of Arc had it all made, and she got to watch when they walked through a town. She was quite smart. Though they objected her right her to march through the to get to the river to the Loin River. They didn't really think it'd be a smart idea to go to, to attack at the Loin River first. They said to her, No, it's not smart. If we were to go to the Loin River first, we would lose. Because it's too heavily guarded by that castle. But sure enough, they did take casualties by Orleans which was one of her first targets that she hit. But they still won. And that's how she ended up being the victor. But, like I said, then the court hearings occurred after she was captured. She was taken to court. They tried her for witchcraft and a few other hogwash crimes. But it was an English court, so obviously they're going to go one way. And sure enough, after that hearing occurred, there was one guy who, though, who would not go that way. And that was the priest. He would not charge her. Even though he was the judge, he would not charge her. He would not find her guilty. Though, however, though, however, he would try to find her guilty under certain charges. Weird, isn't it? But they did end up finding her guilty and burned her three times. Though they retried her later on. And she was found innocent of all charges. She was acquitted. But this time it was a combination of both French and English. Jury was different. I mean, if you look at it the different way, the French obviously had a different opinion than the British, a.k.a. English then. They weren't known as the British then. But the French wanted to challenge them after the war. And this, this was held after the war was over in 1453. After the Hundred Years' War was over. Hundred Years' War began in 1337 when the English wanted to expand their ground. They wanted to go into France, which they held part of. And it almost literally fell apart. Just like the 80 Year War. A little different, though. But no really strong figure really stood out for the 80 Year War, unlike the, unlike the Hundred Years' War. We'll get into that one here shortly. Well, with that being said, I gotta get out of here. I got work to do. Peace.